How to tell the difference between a wrist sprain and a wrist fracture. A wrist sprain occurs when ligaments in the wrist become stretched too far and tear partially or entirely. In contrast, a wrist fracture occurs when one of the bones in the wrist breaks. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell the difference between a wrist sprain and fracture, as both injuries generate similar symptoms and are caused by similar accidents falls on an outstretched hand or a direct blow to the wrist. One, indeed, a fractured wrist very often involves sprained ligaments. To definitively distinguish between the two types of wrist injuries a medical assessment with X-rays is required, although it's possible at times to be able to differentiate between a wrist sprain and fracture at home before heading off to a clinic or hospital. Diagnosing a wrist sprain Move your wrist and assess it. Wrist sprains have a wide range of severity depending on the degree of stretch or tearing to the ligaments. A mild wrist sprain grade one infers some ligament stretching, but no significant tearing. A moderate sprain grade two infers significant tearing up to 50% of the fibers and may be associated with some loss of function. A severe sprain grade three infers a greater degree of tearing or complete rupture of ligaments. In general, only some grade two and all grade three wrist sprains need medical attention. All grade one and most grade two sprains can be managed at home. A grade three wrist sprain can involve an avulsion fracture. The ligament tears away from the bone and takes a small chip of bone with it. Three. The most common ligament sprained in the wrist is the scapho-lunate ligament, which connects the scaphoid bone to the lunate bone. 4. Identify the type of pain you are feeling. Again, wrist sprains are highly variable in severity, so the type and or amount of pain varies greatly also. Grade 3 sprains that involve an avulsion fracture are very painful immediately, and involve both sharp and throbbing type pain. Sprains generate the most pain with movement and are usually much less symptomatic with lack of movement immobilization. In general, if your wrist is very painful and difficult to move, see your doctor right away and get it assessed. Ice it and see how it responds. Sprains of all grades respond well to ice or cold therapy because it reduces inflammation and numbs surrounding nerve fibers that generate pain. The more serious the sprain, the more swelling you'll see localized around the injury, which will make the area look puffy and enlarged. Small hairline stress fractures are often more impacted by cold therapy long -term than more serious fractures, which require medical attention. Check for bruising the next day. Inflammation creates swelling, but that's not the same as bruising. Swelling from inflammation doesn't cause much color change in the skin, aside from some redness from flushing due to the heat created. The dark blue color of bruising is caused by blood leaking into the tissues just below the surface of the skin. As the blood degrades and gets flushed out of those tissues, the bruise changes color lighter blue, then eventually yellowish. See how it feels after a few days. Essentially all grade 1 wrist sprains, and some grade 2 sprains, feel significantly better after a few days, especially if you rest the injury and apply cold therapy to it. Grade 1 and some grade 2 sprains heal quickly, 1 to 2 weeks, whereas grade 3 sprains, particularly with avulsion fractures, take the most amount of time to heal, sometimes a few months. Hairline, stress, fractures can also heal pretty quickly, couple of weeks, whereas more serious fractures can take a few months or more, depending if surgery is done.